Should your nonprofit use Snapchat? So first of all, Snapchat is a mobile app that lets users send videos and pictures that disappear within seconds. In terms of an overview, Snapchat, by the numbers, it was launched in 2011, like I said before. Right now, there are about 100 million users, 6 billion video views every day. That seems like a lot, but it's actually nothing compared to Facebook. 86% of Snapchat users fall within 13 to 37. So we're talking about young millennials. It's $100,000 that's a minimum ad budget. So at this point, Snapchat, you really can't advertise on it unless you have a lot of money. So it's really not a platform that is being opened up to all the brands, which is in a sense kind of what Snapchat users love about it, is that it's a place where people can kind of hang out, be themselves and have fun and not worry about big brands coming in and spamming them with ridiculous messages. Okay, so what, what do users love about Snapchat? So again, when I first started using it, I was like, what is this? How is this different from Instagram? Well, it's kind of a temporary image or temporary video. There's a lot of features in Snapchat where you can add stickers and you can draw on them, you can color things, you can take other people's snaps and draw on them and then share them with your friends. So there's a lot of creative self-expression going on. It's really about this moment, right? It's all about what you're doing right now. And there's not this permanent persona on the internet, right? Which is a concern, I guess, for a lot of millennials. You know, they feel, well, I'm posting pictures. It's always going to be there. I have to worry about the next job interview. With Snapchat, that's not so much the case. Although I will say people can take screenshots of pictures. So again, everything on the internet, you should assume it is permanent. Snapchat originally started out as a texting app and you would just send messages out to people back and forth, totally private. And then Snapchat added a feature called Stories, where now you publish a snap and anyone following you can see it only as long as you determine, you know, a second, 15 seconds. So the question is, should your nonprofit use Snapchat? And in a sense, this isn't really a question about Snapchat. This is a question about a new social network, the new shiny thing that comes downstream and wow, everybody else is using it. It's getting a buzz. Should we use it? Right? So there are very important questions you should ask about any new social network, including Snapchat. Are your people on Snapchat? Um, of course, every nonprofit has a certain percent of supporters that you can classify as millennials and they use Snapchat. But we really have to determine, is this a big percent? Is it most of our people? So, for example, uh, the organization Do Something, they've discovered, and they already know this, that a lot of their supporters are millennials, and a lot of them are using Snapchat. So they launched uh, a Snapchat program or initiative, and they even hired a guy to be in charge of Snapchat. And... Uh, so here's an example from Do Something. And what's interesting is that they, they're pretty creative. So I think the thing about Snapchat, if you're going to do it, you have to be creative about it. And the constraints of Snapchat, meaning that the story is only available for 24 hours and you could set timers on each video or image, uh, it, you would think it adds a constraint, but it actually opens up a little bit of creativity. So, for example, with uh, Do Something, they had a Valentine's Day campaign where they asked people to pick their own ending. So they published a few snaps asking followers, what should I do? I want to deliver these Valentine cards to, I think it was uh, el elderly people who couldn't get out of their homes, or maybe they were in, a, in a, um, an assisted living facility or something like that. But anyhow, he wanted, they wanted to do good. We want to have an impact. But the question was, how should I deliver the Valentine cards? Should I show up in a suit? Should I show up in a, a dressed as Cupid? Should I run around in the snow and deliver the cards? And so then the followers, the users, were able basically picking the ending. Here's another example, Bernie uh, Sanders, obviously, using Snapchat. You know, you really want to think about, do you have the bandwidth? The third question here is, how will you add value without interrupting, okay? So when I say without interrupting, we have to realize that Snapchat is currently a place where there's really not a lot of ads. It's kind of a big party. People are doing their own thing. People are very creative. 
And if your nonprofit comes along and you start posting about your events and how great you are and your new board member or whatever it is, it could be perceived as an interruption. So you definitely, you know, you never want to come across as tone deaf on a social network. So it's always important to find out what are people talking about, what's important to them, and go from there. So uh, this is a snap from Mercy for Animals. So they are basically an animal rights organization. And they say, happy National Pig Day, right? They're, they also thank their followers a lot. Thank you so much. We were able to make this change. It's Safeway. And I believe it's Safeway and Albertsons. They um, launched a petition against those folks to have cage-free chickens, you know, to sell chicken that was raised in a cage-free environment. So they put published a snap, said, we did it. You guys did it. Thank you so much. We got this result, right? So reaching out to people in that way. The last thought here is probably one of the most important is how healthy is your horse? Okay. So I'm sure you've heard the, um, the saying, you know, don't put the cart before the horse. Okay. So in this case, the cart is Snapchat. Okay. The horse is your website. It's your email. It's Facebook. Facebook is the dominant social network and probably the most important social network for any nonprofit. And the reason why is because most people are there. Most people use Facebook. And yes, millennials use Facebook. Uh, but the key with Facebook is that, um, you know, most of your audience is using Facebook. That's the first point. Second point is that Facebook has analytics. So on your Facebook page, you can view your audience. You can even analyze your own internal audience from your donor database and do a lot of research about what people like, demographics, preferences, and so forth. So really, that's a place where you can get to know your fans. You can publish regular content fairly easily and monitor how people are reacting to those messages and also what messages they're sharing as well, right? So I would say, you know, Facebook is definitely a foundation in terms of a social network. Uh, so if you're thinking, wow, Snapchat is so great, but you're not really posting consistently on Facebook and your fan base is kind of sleepy, I would definitely encourage you to say, well, why don't you get that going? You know, why don't you kind of wake up your fan base again uh, and start engaging them, figure out, well, how are we going to respond to these folks? How are we going to create content that's interesting? How are we going to publish posts on our Facebook page that make our people look really cool? Okay. Uh, and that statement is going to be even more true with Snapchat, right? Because Snapchat is kind of the cool social network to be for uh, millennials. And of course, millennials are going to be more likely to share something if it makes them look cool to their friends. So it's not really about your brand or your nonprofit and how you look. It's about how your people look to their friends. And that's the, that's the essence of, content marketing in a sense, right? Uh, so another uh, point here is that if your website isn't mobile, um, you know, you may want to get that straightened out first and have really great content on your website that can be viewed on a mobile device. Keep in mind that Snapchat is, it's a mobile social network. There's no real version of it on a browser, right? So 100% of the users are using a mobile device. If they, if you engage them on Snapchat and encourage people to visit your website and they can't even use it, they can't even view your website on a mobile device, you're, you know, you're, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot in a sense. Okay. So how healthy is your horse? Don't put the cart before the horse. Make sure you have a strong website, a strong email list. Your email list is super critical because email is where you're going to be able to deliver personalized messages to people and nurture those relationships and identify who's likely to donate, who's likely to become a volunteer and engage people consistently with an email newsletter, for example. OK, so don't put the cart before the horse and make sure that the horse itself, the horse is healthy. OK.